Welcome to the channel everyone. In this video I'm going to start talking about MIG welding and this will probably be a several part series. There's a lot of channels out there that can cover welding a whole lot better than I can know more about the technical side of the MIG welders but this is going to deal with ICAR certification most body shops are going to. Actually to get ICAR certification for welding. I think the first time I took the test was back in the 90s so I've taken multiple of these tests uh, I think the certification lasts about five years and you have to renew it, retest again. But uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of give you a brief rundown on welding setup, uh, metal thickness, different types of welds you're going to run into. So the very first time I had to take the welding test, we had to drive about three hours to a testing facility and I believe it was a vocational school they used. You get there and they've got a, nice, a bunch of nice welding stations. They've got all the same kind of welders there. You show up, you're unprepared, you really don't know what you're going to have to do. You've got a limited amount of time to figure it out, to do some practice welds and then start testing on it and that doesn't really seem like real shop experience or a shop test to me because every time you weld on a car at work or in your garage you're not starting with a brand new machine you've never seen before and all of a sudden you got to figure it out so you start welding some plug welds and some butt welds and stuff like that that they're going to require you have to figure out your your heat setting your wire speed and they wouldn't actually even give you any help i asked the instructor a couple times for some tips and I was told, well, we're not going to help you. If you fail the test, maybe we'll help you with a little bit of it when you retest. And at the time, that didn't seem like a very good way to take a test, but somehow I managed to pass it, and I've passed every one I've ever taken. Doesn't mean I'm an excellent welder, it just means I know enough to pass the test. So then actually they got better. The last time I took it, the instructor would come to the shop and you would actually use your welders at work and at the place I was at I think we had three different welders everybody had their own preference so you're you're used to your welder you're, and you're going to test with the welder you've been using so that made it a whole lot easier plus the instructor would actually go step by step and show you how to set your wire speed and your heat settings uh, because over the years I had my preferences where I had my settings at for if I'm doing vertical, overhead, or down horizontal, and for what different thicknesses of metal. But it was funny because I'd weld something, somebody else in the shop would grab the same welder, and they'd do basically the same type of welding, and they'd change the settings completely. And, and we'd all have good results, but the settings were all over the place from one person or another. So the instructor showed us a baseline how to get started to set the welder up and it did help quite a bit. Okay, in automotive use, you're gonna use 23 thousandths wire and that's common in everything. It doesn't matter what thickness of metal, it's thin metal, thick metal, 23 thousandths is what you're gonna use. And the MIG welders all have a shielding gas, which is a tank on the back. And without that, the weld is exposed to the atmosphere and you won't get a clean weld to get porosity. Uh, and you can tell if you run out of gas when you're welding or you forget to turn it on and you start welding. You get a lot of sizzling and popping noise and the weld is just rough and full of porosity. You got two settings you're going to mess with on your welder. And that'll be the wire speed and the heat setting. Now your voltage, that's your heat. That's how much heat you're going to use. But the wire speed is pretty important. It doesn't just speed that wire up or slow it down. When you increase the wire speed, you increase the amps and you're going to get a little bit better penetration but on the other hand you can get your weld too wide or too high and those are also important in these tests there's a, a certain width the weld has to be a certain height okay the first thing you want to do is open up your welder and they've all got these charts on here and that'll tell you what your preferred settings are and that's that's a baseline that's where you start and then you'll tweak it from there but if you read this chart you come over here to the gauge metal and these icar I've still got a few of these things laying around, they call them coupons, and there's thin and thick, and the thin ones are 22 gauge, and the thick ones are 16 gauge. So, say we're going to use the thin one here at 22 gauge, and we'll come over here, here's 22 gauge, we come down to our wire size, 23 thousandths, and then it'll tell us our setting for our voltage and our wire speed. So that's a good starting point. Every welder will have this. Once you try that out on your welds, then you can fine tune it if you need to. And you're gonna change this depending if you're vertical, horizontal, or overhead. 
Okay, once you got your baseline set on your welder, next thing you want to do is trim off this wire. If you want, here's a close-up look at that. I think it'll show up. But the end of this wire from each weld, it'll have a little bulb on the end of it. And you want to remove that. The wire will be burnt, maybe a little carbon on there. And just trim that off to maybe about a quarter inch. And you're supposed to do this with every weld. Now, you're working on a car and you've got all kinds of welds to do. You usually don't stop and do this every time. But if you're taking a welding test or you want to make sure that that weld is something structural that's going to perform like it's supposed to, you want to do this. First one we got is a fillet weld with two thin pieces and all that is is just putting the two together and putting a weld on here. Now when you do this, the welds have to be a certain length and they've got this gauge here and when you're doing a fillet weld like that or any kind of a butt weld the weld has to be a minimum of this length and a maximum of that length if your weld is too short it's going to fail if it's too long it's going to fail another thing they do you can't weld for a little bit and stop and then weld a little bit more and stop it has to be one continuous weld you can't let go of the trigger so and if you got to keep it nice in line you've got to keep it the right length and no, no breaks in the weld, no pinholes, no porosity. And this part of the gauge here, they'll put that on top of the weld. And that weld can't be above that gauge mark right there. So if it's too high and that touches it in that little corner there, that's going to fail. One of these is for widths, depending on which weld you're using. They've got a width right there, and that gauge will tell you what your width is supposed to be, so you can't go over that. So there's a lot to do, a lot to control on these welds to pass this test. Okay, the next one is an open butt weld, which they'll just take the two pieces, and you have to fill that gap there. And you'll do these with the thin pieces, with the thick pieces. Uh, they'll have plug welds. You'll punch a 5 16 hole in one panel, you overlap it, and you weld it through and you'll do this a thick piece to a thick piece, a thin piece of metal to a thin piece of metal, and then a thin piece of metal to a thick piece of metal. These all have to be a certain size, a certain height, even with the plug welds they're going to check for height. And you come in here and if it's too high, you're not going to pass. If it's too low and if it's undercut, you're not going to pass. One more I'll talk about real quick, and that's the butt weld with the backer. And we're going to put two pieces of the metal together like this with the backer underneath it and you'll do that with the thin metal and the thick metal. And the trick to these, the butt welds with the backer, whatever piece of metal you're using, the thin or the thick, that gap should be three thicknesses of that metal. Take three of these as a gauge and that's what you're going to use for your gap when you're doing a, a butt weld with a backer. So what we did, once we did all our practice, you would do, say, let's start with the first one. We're going to do a fillet weld a thin with thin pieces of metal. Okay, we do our practice welds and we think we're, we got it handled. The instructor would check it, look at the length, look at the height, look at the width. It passed. I'd write down the settings of the welder for each one I'm doing. And this way, when I'm working on a car, I'd get this cheat sheet out, I'd have it there, because you're changing welds so much. You're going to plug welds, you're vertical, you're overhead, you're doing a backer, and I'd just pull it out, I'd find what I need, I'm going to plug weld thin metal against thin metal, here's my heat setting, there's my wire speed, and I wouldn't have to mess around and keep adjusting, I'd set it for there, and I'm ready to go. Okay, and then, once you do your welds, the visual part passes, everything looks good. Then they'll do the destructive test, and that and just involves breaking these welds apart. And that's even changed over the years. They used to just drive a chisel in between and see how it'd come apart. Now they'll either plug welds or get twisted, or if it's a butt weld, it just gets flexed until it breaks. So once all your welds pass, you do get this really cool refrigerator magnet. So you'll have that going for you. So in the next video, I'm going to do some welding. I hope you like this video and look forward to the next one in this series. Thanks for watching.